Now, as the world failed to properly investigate the origin of COVID-19, a network of researchers and scientists have emerged over the past year, joined together by a desire to get to the bottom of the mystery. They live all over the world and had no connection before the pandemic. They call themselves Drastic. And they're a multidisciplinary team whose skills include biology, maths, engineering, and the ability to collect and archive thousands of web pages deleted by the Chinese Communist Party. Some members have already published some peer-reviewed papers, and they've been responsible for unearthing quite incredible information on the origins of COVID, including the fact, and you would have heard about this, that miners got sick and died after working in a Yunnan cave, Yunnan cave that has been visited by the Wuhan Institute of Virology scientists. That was quite a major discovery. Just this week, they discovered patents that show the Wuhan Institute of Virology filed an application in June 2018 to patent bat-rearing cages capable of breeding. They've scoured the internet and mapped out bat sampling expeditions where lab workers were not wearing proper PPE and there were cases of scratches and infections. Drastic has now, I mean, it's, it started as this underground group and now it's been mentioned in the Washington Post, the New York Post and UK media. Now, the actual members of this group, most of them, they have kept their identity secret pretty much out of concern for their personal safety. The person who's coordinated this group over the past year, working 15 hours a day, is only known as Billy Bostickson, obviously not his real identity. But for the first time tonight, two members of Drastic have decided to show their face, to be identified and come on national television. Joining me now in this world exclusive are Drastic members, engineer and data scientist based in Auckland, New Zealand, Gilles Dimenu and Hi, uh, good evening and over in India we've got Dr. Monali Rahalka who's a microbiologist Hello. working at the Agaha Research Institute in India. Thank you both for having the courage to come on air. Um, Gilles, I want to start with you. One of your crucial discoveries okay. or one of the, the group's crucial discoveries was finding the two missing uh, bat beta coronaviruses which the Wuhan Institute of Virology has refused to speak about. Um, the virus databases have been deleted long ago, or at least hidden uh, from any investigators. You know, why are these databases so important to access? Well, it's actually essential to have access to these databases because they all all the uh, viruses that the Wuhan Institute of Virology has collected and sequenced over time. And in particular, they hold all the new and unpublished viruses that we don't know anything about. Uh, and um, it's very interesting because the recent uh, uh, research that the Institute was doing was actually using some of these new unpublished viruses. And, and they had an express mandate to use uh, uh, some of these to do uh, studies about uh, infection, uh, studies in vivo, so with animals and so on. That's basically the latest mandate uh, for 2019-20. Uh, mandate and research which was actually partially funded by EcoHealth Alliance, as we mentioned before. Uh, so we never really had access to the viruses. We, we don't really know what's there, uh, which viruses they have. Uh, we, um, previously, we only had access to a few of these. And in any case, the databases went offline uh, in 2019, 2020. So there is absolutely no way today we can actually check uh, whether in these uh, viruses, especially amongst the new viruses, there could be uh, any uh, virus that would be quite closely related to SARS-CoV-2, which is a virus uh, causing COVID-19. Uh, no, we, it's a very good question to ask. But for some reason, all these databases have been taken offline. Uh, there's a total of about 15 databases managed by the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and they are all offline. There's nothing left online. So we, we have questions, but we have no way to ask them. And we, we, can't, we can't basically get the answer. No, absolutely not. Now, Mona Lee, Drastic, your group, sent a letter to the World Health Organization investigators, a letter to, to each of them or an email to each of them with 50 technical Sorry. questions uh, that, that exactly. you think they need to answer as they, you know, commence this inquiry. You know, what is the most crucial thing that you think they need to find out here? Uh, 
from the uh, 50 critical questions what i think uh, like uh, i mainly researched about the mojang mine shaft uh, cases so basically as you told the story before uh, in 2012 there were uh, six miners or six people who went into a bat infested cave and they were infected by a pneumonia it was a lethal pneumonia and three of these pe people died and three survived uh, it was an extensive stay in the hospital and uh, Dr. Zhang Nanshan, who is the SARS doctor of China, he remotely uh, monitored those cases. Also, there is a PhD thesis found by the drastic team, which uh, records that uh, the SARS antibody test in four of these people was positive, right? So um, in our paper published in Frontiers in uh, Public Health, we have uh, concluded that uh, the, the connection of this uh, Mojang minus pneumonia with COVID is very much uh, significant. Uh, secondly, the nearest relative of uh, SARS coronavirus 2, that is RATG 13, it is uh, RATG 13 was also collected from the same mine shaft, right? So a few of our questions actually uh, focus on uh, these sequences which were collected on the mine, which were supposed to be the next relatives of the SARS coronavirus 2, and uh, the sequences of eight such uh, viruses is not out yet. And uh, without uh, getting access to all of the sequences, without knowing that what experiments were actually going on on these uh, viruses or maybe the sequences or the recombinant viruses obtained from this particular Mojang mine shaft and also the entire Yunnan region. I think we cannot uh, rule out the lab leak hypothesis. And that's, that's why we had actually posed this 50 questions and uh, they were ca categorized into different things. Uh, yes, yes, as you say, you know, the question about those miners who fell sick um, it, it is just so crucial and whether they were sick with, with what has become, you know, known as COVID-19. Um, Gio, what do you think has been wrong with the WHO approach? You know, do you think they've looked at any of these uh, questions? Um, you know, what have you made of their inquiry this week? Well, I'm afraid to have to say that uh, the show that we saw a few days ago last Friday was a fairly poor show. I think that everybody in the world and all the press, except in China, uh, has not been particularly impressed. Um, what's uh, from someone who has been researching this for you know many many months has spent a lot of time on this with with a full team. Uh, uh, what's really upsetting is the way the WHO has very um, in a very sloppy way, has basically uh, concluded first that they should uh, consider a, a frozen food pathway, and secondly, the way they uh, concluded they, that they should exclude a, a lab pathway. So let's go to the first one. So remember that the WHO, against every uh, opinion of every scientist except in China, the WHO has decided that the frozen food pathway could be the way SARS-CoV-2 arrived in China. So that's very interesting. But the most interesting is that uh, one of the WHO team members later actually explained to a journalist that the reason why they included that pathway uh, was simply to please uh, their Chinese colleagues. Uh, so now we are effectively uh, uh, something which is considered as a main theory, which actually was never introduced out of conviction, but just to please the Chinese colleagues. Uh, I find that quite um, amazing. Absolutely. No. Look, we're, we're almost out of time. We've only got a minute left, so I just want to go back to Mona Lee for, for a minute. Have, have you got anything to add, Mona Lee, on, on you know, what your analysis is of how the WHO uh, has approached this. And I think it's also worth pointing out that, you know, as a group, you're, you're science-based or you say you're science-based and, uh, you know, you don't have a, a, a set view on the origins of the virus. This is a case of, of, of you all weighing up the probabilities of, of how it started. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, we had uh, sent us 50 questions to WHO. Plus, at several times, we have tweeted uh, the peer-reviewed publications and also our findings uh, requesting the WHO members like Marion Koopmans or uh, other members to look at this uh, particular um, findings What as a drastic team what we have got. Uh, we never got any uh, response, I think. Um, and uh, I think uh, the questions which were emailed, uh, they got a weak response and... Uh, uh, we never got an assurance that, okay, we will look into all of this. That's what I know uh, from what Billy uh, told me or what Andre Goffinet, uh, yeah. 
they are all trustic members who actually communicated with this uh, uh, with the scientist in the who team and uh, we never got a solid response for, uh, from them uh, actually we had uh, pointed out very valid questions like for example there could be some uh, leakage into the you know sewage or maybe there were some uh, humanized mice over there so there were some lab animals over there which could have uh, uh, got infected and then the virus would have got spread so such theories were also uh, have to be investigated when we say that it it could be a lab leak hypothesis so all of these questions were not answered by the team or i think we did not get any email response back from them assuring this yeah look got to thank you both so much for having uh, the courage to come on air tonight to show your faces. You know, I know there have been a lot of concerns uh, for, the, for the safety of your team as you continue to investigate this, you know, in, in, in the flying in the face of authorities. Uh, Jill Dimonuf, Manali, Ralka, thank you very much and look forward to seeing Thanks a lot, what other world leading thank stories you. your group uncovers. Thank you.